when you have time to spend with people personally and they start talking to you, there's when you start finding the growth. It's not just idle affirmations, you know, just repeating something over and over again or, you know, write down some BS. Hey, man, really, what's going on with you? My guy, what's really going on? Why are you not happy? What you afraid of? Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another episode of the Evolution Podcast. And to the show, as always, Ethan P. Heisey. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. It's going to be another great episode. We got some really good stuff to talk about today. Awesome. And Mr. Terrence Johnson. Hello everyone. Glad to be here. Awesome. And myself, Sagi Schreiber, and Ethan and I are mentees of Mr. J. And on this show, we ask Mr. J any questions that we might have regarding our businesses or life. And also, we talk about other topics that came through his mentees um, in recent calls. And so today, Mr. J is going to talk to us about fear. Um, and let's, you know, Mr. J, take it away. Well, yeah, first of all, Always a pleasure. And uh, Ethan was just making mention this, guys. So, you know, before we do the recording, we always said, well, what are we going to discuss? You know, a quick roundtable, if you will. And um, Ethan broke up a very good topic. One that I'm very passionate about is fear. What is fear? Fear is the instinct that we're all born with. So it, I don't want you, most people don't, don't really break down fear. You know, you're born naturally being afraid of something. Most kids are afraid of the dark. They're fearful of the dark. You didn't teach your children to fear the dark. They just say, mommy, daddy, keep the light on. Why? Because somehow innately they're afraid of the dark. I'm sure most people would agree with that statement. Again, you didn't teach them to be fearful. It's something somehow, some way, all of a sudden my kid's afraid. And now the rest of your life, you're trying to teach them not to be fearful. Well, fear. What does it do and why do we have it? Why is it that we become afraid of anything or fearful of something? And here's one to ponder is being afraid and being fearful of the same thing. Not at all. What I've come to believe, have I ever been afraid of something? Hell yeah. When I was in the military, I was afraid of a lot of things. You know, or let me put it this way, fearful of a lot of things. You know, but still, you know, courage is not the absence of fear at all, not at all. What one learns to do is just do it. You know, when I first learned to fire an uh, automatic weapon, when you're in the foxhole and you had to zero your weapon, I never fired a weapon before in my life. And, you know, and all you hear all these gunshots going on around you, you're fearful. But somehow you learn to do it. And you learn to do it through someone yelling and screaming at you through instruction. <laughs> they got you so focused. Or are they screaming at you to keep you focused? So see, let's deal with that. One of the ways one overcomes fear is to focus. There's no see, I don't want to just tell you why you have fear, but how do I deal with it? You see, because if one is fearful, they're only focused on what they're fearing. They're not focused on what needs to get done. You see, and fear is something, again, you're born with. But he tells you, fear not. Don't be afraid. It's something that's already in you, but you're going to have to learn to overcome it. Now, sometimes fear can be a good thing. Let me say that to you. You might be walking down the alley and it's dark and something inside of you is telling you, don't walk down that alley. We all know what I'm talking about, too. Something, even though you're walking in this place by yourself, we've all heard that happen. Your heart rate might go up. The intuition kicks in. And it's, it's intuitively telling you, don't go do that or don't do this. So in that regard, it's a good thing. It's warning you. Now, for the one who doesn't listen, they walk down the alley, something bad might happen to them. Because in that regard, they didn't listen to their fear. So you have to know when to understand what fear is for. In your instincts, and you have to know when your fear is stopping you and holding you back. You have to learn to master it, as with anything. Is courage something you master? Think about it. 
Someone says, have courage. Well, what is courage? They say, well, courage is the opposite of fear, right? Well, if one must learn to overcome their fear, and the only one you can, only way you can overcome your fear is by acquiring courage. So then courage is something that over a period of time, one would acquire. So it is something that is progressive, if you will, moving forward. So when fear comes, it's coming in a variety of ways. Either to prevent you from doing something you shouldn't do. Now, people won't tell you that, but they'll say, oh, just ignore your fear. Well, hell, if you want a mountain cliff, and everything in your gut is telling you don't stand on the cliff and you stand on the cliff and you weren't fearful of it and you fall to your death. That wasn't wise. The deal is you must master and learn to rule your spirit and have the ability to discern. Is what I'm doing going to help me or is what I'm going to, to hurt me? Now, again, I don't want to sound too complicated about it, but to say just to tell someone, just get over your fear, where well, many people have all different types of fear, fear of heights, fear of, uh, you know, insects, fear of snakes or whatever. Again, they're not wanting to be afraid, but they are. Now, you take all these fears, just in those basic examples, and now apply that to business, apply that to marriage, apply that to the economy, apply that to the world you live in. Some people actually won't come out their houses. Because they're afraid. Some people literally won't do any investments because they're afraid. Some people literally won't do a business because they're afraid of how somebody might you know, perceive them. People won't put stuff up on Instagram because they're afraid of how someone might you know, perceive them. Fear. Now, I know there's an acronym that says fear is false evidence appearing real. I, I, mean, I know that's what people say. Okay, cool. You can roll with that if you want. But like I said, in my opinion, fear is something that you're born with. You know, like I would give an example. You can take a child and you the child has chocolate on its face. I've said this many a times and you ask the child that you eat the chocolate and you never told your child to tell a lie. And the child instinctively knows to lie. You, did you eat the mm -hmm. chocolate really? And the child says, uh, no. Well, how does he know to lie? It's instinctive. Just like the fear is. You didn't teach your child to lie. You have to teach your children how to tell the truth. Yeah. You're going to have to teach your children how to overcome these fears. And so when you really start digging into fear at its base element, you know, this is why psychiatrists and psychologists spend years of study trying to get people not to be afraid. And it always goes back to what? Your childhood. You'll always see that. It always goes back to how you was raised, when, when they regress you, if you will, reverse engineering, if you will. It's always going back to your childhood, you know, those very formidable and developmental years in your life. And so now when you reach adulthood, a lot of kids won't try it for the team because they're afraid. A lot of guys won't go to the gym because he might be a little skinny looking, right? And he's afraid to go in the gym because everybody's like ripped. And he's like, oh, no, nah, man, and he's afraid. Not realizing, you know what? Those guys didn't always look like that. They used to look like him. Now you have the guy who went to the gym, and even though he felt that way, he did it anyway. And that's the guy who now looks that way. So it's, it's really deep, man, when you really think about it. Everyone does not have the same emotional uh, fortitude or the intellectual wherewithal to mm -hmm. help themselves solve their own problems. And fear is a really big problem for a lot of people. It really is. And it's not as uh, complicated as people make it out to be. And uh, it's, it's something that could be easily dealt with. It's always going to come back to the individual facing themselves and, you know, like just convincing themselves that I can do it. So what are your thoughts Mr. on Johnson, that? Mr. Johnson, do you remember when you told me, and you may not, but you said, I believe that fear is something um or that to fear something that has never even happened is a form of, of insanity. insanity. That's right. And I would tell you, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, when you when you mentor guys in business, and they're telling you things that you know they don't share, and I'm not going to go into any detail that about that, obviously, but they're telling you what they're really feeling. And I would say to them, my brother, to worry about something that hasn't even happened is literally insanity. And to worry about it to such an extent that it can keep you up at night. 
It ain't even happened. That's how a lot of people live. That's how a lot of people. What do you mean? I can't get any rest. Why am I worrying about what? You're worrying about what could happen. Even though it hasn't happened, think about it. So you go, and then here's the worst part about it. Here's the kicker. Remember this. Here's the other part of that, Ethan. The other part of that is this: not only are you worried about something that hasn't even happened, the odds are what you're worrying about doesn't even happen. And so you realize over a period of time that all that energy and effort I put into worrying was just wasted. That's why worrying about something is a waste of time. Really think about that. You're wasting your time by worrying. So is that because people are thinking more emotionally about things than using logic? Because when you think, when you put it that way, if the chances are that it's not going to happen, but it's still keeping you up at night, it's pointless to worry about. Well, that comes from fear. See, it's the fear that causes the worry. You see, if I'm fearing something and now I'm worrying about it and it's me worrying about what I'm fearing that hasn't even happened that makes me insane. This is the cycle of worry. This is yeah. really think about what I just said to you. This is the cycle of worry. You're worrying about something that hasn't even happened. But in your mind, you're playing it over and over, whatever it is. To a point so much that it stresses you out, you're worried. You heard people say they had a nervous breakdown or whatever. And when I start talking to guys, I said, well, did that happen? They're like, no. So then what did you learn from that? And then there's silence. What did you learn from that experience? Not just that, oh, that didn't happen. Let's just move on with the conversation. Bullshit. What did you learn? from worrying about something and then it, what you were worrying about didn't happen. What did you learn as a person, as a human being, as a man, as a spiritual? What, what are you gaining from that? Well, you should learn not to worry because if you're worrying about it, first of all, then it must be out of your control because most people don't worry about things that they can control. Would you agree with that? So then the fact that it's out of your control is what's making you worry. What's making you worry is the fear that you have no control. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's an effect. It's, a, it's not just get over your fear. It's not, oh, and the only reason you're fearful is because you worry. And then why would you worry? Because when you were in the position before where you needed to worry and what you were worried about didn't happen, then you should realize that me worrying about something doesn't change anything. But you say, Mr. Johnson, you know, is that true? Well, how many people are on, you know, I don't know what they give them nowadays. Many of drugs, they give them prescription meds all the time to deal with anxiety, worry, depression. Notice these are all emotions. These are all emotional states. I want you to see that. This is why I try to tell my guys, stay calm. Mm -hmm. Stay in control at all times. Even when you want to explode. You see, men can't explode, man. You get locked up. You go to prison. They look at you like you're crazy. We have to deal with things in a different way. That's why I thank God we have a gym and sports and things of that nature. Because men need that. We do. We need. We're aggressive by nature. It's just the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know how to deal with that, if you don't know how to get that up, man, it, it could be rough for us. A lot of guys, man, are just living... They don't even know a lot. The world don't even know they exist. Straight up. They don't even know they exist because most guys are not high performers. You guys are high performers. It is what it is. You know, but most people are not. Most people are, you know, I don't want to even say the word average. Most people just doing whatever they're doing to get by. They're living the best way they know how. And they're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They don't know that they can escape the matrix. They don't know that they don't have to live in fear. And if they do know it, they don't know how to get out of it. Like I said, you can know to quit smoking, but you don't know how to quit. You know what I mean? You can yeah. know that I need to change my life, but I don't know how to do it. It's like you that. I mean? Yeah, 100%. And this is really the challenge. When I, when I, this is why, you know, when I look at guys always coaching on YouTube and all this other stuff, I mean, I get it. But the fact of the matter is, man, unless you're really spending some time with a person, that's why I, don't, I only take you know, no more than 30. 
I can't get to no more than that. I, you can do it by some mistake, you know, do a, 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 a mastermind, do a huge this, do that. It's just cool. You know, you can reach a lot of people and make some money and impact. But when you have time to spend with people personally and they start talking to you, there's when you start finding the growth. Mm -hmm. There's Yes. And it's not just idle affirmations, you know, just repeating something over and over again or, you know, write down some BS. Hey, man, really, what's going on with you? My guy, what's really going on? Why are you not happy? What you afraid of? You know, and a lot of times men don't have anyone around them to inspire them. Because you have to be the inspiration in your home. You're the inspiration in your business. You're the inspiration in your home. You're the, right. <laughs> you're the inspiration right. for everything. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. It's a lie. You guys are carrying a lot. So who inspires that guy? Who's giving that guy say, hey, I'm proud of you, Ethan? Hey, man, so, yeah, I'm proud of you, man. Because you know what? You're making it look easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, man, I, I, I think, like, because we just got to wrap it up and I, I think like this has been a, like a great topic and we got now into kind of like us controlling our emotional states um what is like one thing and one thing only that we can end with mr j that you say do this every day or do this right now and you'll make sure that your trajectory now changes regarding your controlling your emotional state no amount of money thank you and everybody you a minute of time Mm -hmm. yep. Let me say that to you again. No amount of money. Get everybody value a minute of time. Your time is your most valuable asset. Use it wisely. Love it. Love it. Thank All you right. so much. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, Always a pleasure, guys. guys. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody who's listening to the show, guys, if you got value from this and you enjoy listening and tuning in to Mr. J and... Um, in this show, please rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That would go such a long way. You don't have to do it now if you're driving or something, but later on in the day, just remember us, come back and rate us um, actively, please. That would mean the world to us. We really want to read your comments and your, your feedback and, and to see you guys writing the show that would expose it to more people. So that's one thing. Second thing is like share it on social media. Let us know that you're here, that you're getting value. We would love to hear from you. We would love to also gather your questions. If you have any questions, we can also uh, answer them here on the show. So thank you again. Uh, and Ethan, Mr. J, see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Cheers.